stuff at me. Can't get a refrain of my phone. Me. So, looking all crap up online, but I didn't already have it. Excuse me. I only have three left. Nothing uh, interesting for me. Now call to order the Norton City Council Committee work session of Monday, June 19th, 2023. Please rise for a pledge of allegiance and a moment of silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Lukens? Here. Mr. Bates? Here. Mr. Kernan? Here. Mr. Pilot? Here. Ms. Wibke? Here. Mr. DeHarpart? Here. Mr. Towsley? Here. Starting with communications from the public, Jim Little, please give your name and address for the record. You have five minutes. Jim Little, 920 Rosemary Circle, Wadsworth. I'm here today on a happy note to speak in support of agenda item C. Uh, zoning administrative administrator position based on the duties responsibilities and requirements as outlined in the job description attached as exhibit a page 25 and 32 with the ordinance on page 23 24 of today's agenda establishing a new city position zoning administrator and having a salary of seventy two thousand dollars I feel this is a move in the right direction and should benefit the city contractors developers 
trying to get projects done in the city of Norton. The professional skills outlined in this job describe better, describe better align with the needs of professionals responsible for managing or getting construction work and contracting projects done in the city of Norton. My hope is that this person will work with contractors and developers in a positive and constructive way and not just focus on over-regulating projects with unnecessary enforcement. I welcome this change and look forward to working with the person as it is certain that this will improve the professional business culture in dealing with building and zoning in the city of Norton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Little. I'm not gonna linger, I'm gonna leave with, I presume Mr. Tursky, he'll be reporting to you, correct, this new person? Not he, she, whomever? Appointed by the mayor. Um, Appointed report, by the mayor, reporting, reporting to, to you. To you. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, reporting okay. to the mayor. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave with you as I go a copy of a job description for a zoning administrator in the city of North Miami Beach. It's a little ways off, but it's very comprehensive. May be helpful to you, okay? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We'll Thank you. Good night. To, Have a good night. You, good night. We'll move on to the Committee of the Whole. Letter A, donation of Safety Town Shed. Mr. Collette. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this here is authorizing the administration to accept the donation of a 12 by 20 shed from the Norton Women's Associate Club here in Norton. They're donating this, uh, they call it a shed, uh, for the Norton Safety Town equipment. For years, they've always had to try to figure out, okay, where are we gonna put this material at after each <coughs> safety town? And always made sense to have its own dedicated area and the Norton Women's uh, Club has graciously uh, donated uh, or is donating this shed. So this is just authorizing the administration to accepted on behalf of the city. Is that the one that's up there that looks like a barn? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I had a quick question. So the, the amount that we paid was 374.27, which obviously is a amazing bargain. I was just curious, what was that amount for? Is that, is that tax or? That we didn't pay that. We didn't pay anything. That, oh. was, that was paid by the women's club. Women's okay. club purchased it. All right. Yeah, the, in, the invoice is in the is just to help identify what the asset is because it wasn't a good way to say what was being donated. So we okay. just asked them to provide the invoice. Right. This is what they paid. Yeah. And then it's just identifying the item being donated to the yeah. city. Okay. Yeah, I just seen amount paid. I didn't know if that was from the city yeah. or what. Yes, just clarification. Thank yeah. you. Well, what a great uh, what a great donation. That's amazing. Yes. Miss um, Vicki Wallace came several weeks ago and talked to us, talked to Consul about it. Yeah. And when we when the order was placed, and we said it that night that if we hadn't heard anything from from any council members, that uh, her hope was that she was going to uh, go the next morning and order it, yep. with the hopes of getting it by the time Safety Town was over. And I think the right about the last we uh, last day or two before Safety Town ended, it showed up. So uh, timing was 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 pretty good. Excellent. So. Once again, though, we do thank uh, the Women's Club for providing that to the city. Not raising the red figures when they came to me, too. I'm sure it's not just delayed. Sounds fine. Down there. <laughs> Even got the part yeah. where it says we can't it's hear coming. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of meta. Hey, Mike. Did you receive some complaints that they're, are they anywhere near where the wire is down? Could there have been some cables? 
I don't know. It's it's the, running now. It says YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth stream. Level. I think it's probably just a glitch. Is that what's going to be fixed when they probably when we get the? <coughs> but it's definitely, I mean, showing up on the phone, which is yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's fine on here. Okay, so we'll continue with the meeting. For anybody confused watching the meeting, we had a question whether it was streaming or not, and we've concluded that it is. So we will we'll continue. That being said, uh, the shed is valued at seven thousand four hundred eighty-five dollars and thirty cents. And as others have already mentioned, uh, thank you to the Norton Women's Club for this donation. Uh, it's amazing, fantastic, and uh, will be a big benefit to uh, the Norton Safety Town. Any other questions? Is it fair to say that this is a we had a she shed since it was <laughs> donated from the Norton Women Club? <laughs> this hey, time I moved you. to <laughs> <laughs> add this to our next uh, council's agenda. I'll second with emergency. I'm sorry. And <laughs> well, we to suspend as well. I was going to say if nobody has any objections, I'll be suspending the uh, readings as well then too. It's a she shed. Are you sticking with your second? Yeah, I'll second. Okay. So there is a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Lucan? Yes. Ms. Lipke? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to letter B, engineering services for Cleveland Massillon Road resurfacing. That is my committee. This is just what it says it is. Um, just uh, engineering services to uh, inspect the road. And this is through EDG for $45,342. Um, any further discussion? Uh, just a quick question. What part of Cleveland Maslin does that include? I-76 er, to corp north to corporation limits. Anybody else? I'd like to make a motion to add ordinance number 41 2023 to council's next agenda i'll second there's a motion and a second on the floor is there any further discussion will the clerk please call the roll mr towsley yes mr de harpar yes mr pilot yes <coughs> thank you moving on to letter c zoning administrator position mr lucas yes thank you mr president so this uh ordinance uh 42-2023 is an ordinance adopting the job description and duties for the zoning administrator and the salary for uh, that position, um, showing a salary rate of 72,000. Um, I was curious, would our current zoning personnel be um, automatically going to this position or, or are we taking applications for this or how, how are we planning on doing this? So as it's written now, it's a it's a mayoral appointment. Okay. Yeah. So um, it would be kind of like my position as well. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be appointed. Okay. Yep. Um, unclassified exempt position as well, and all the uh, duties and responsibilities requirements are in here in the agenda. Probably a little, a little too much for me to go through, but any anybody uh, have any? Questions about this position? Well, I, I, I do. Since he asked if it was going to be, if somebody's going to be hired, if it's going to be the same one that's holding the part time position, I believe that's what you were asking, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Basically, yes. So we're going to keep, keep it as it is then? Keep it as it is with who we have, you talking? Yes. It is my intention to, yes. Okay. Um, I actually went through this and basically you've just kind of adapted the old zoning administrator, zoning and building inspector and changed it over to administrator <coughs> as far as uh, the job things. That's evident on the fact that at the bottom of it, it says that it's uh, 0205. I, 
02 and 05 that was made. Yeah, issue date March 1st, 2005, and it was a general order from May of 2002, I think, or maybe that's February of 05. But <clears throat> there has been some changes, and in the meantime, we do have um, some of this kind of spoken to in the, in the in our charter, but we're going from being a union job into being an exempt job. So I take that there wouldn't be any requirements for uh, civil service test or anything on this. The way the zoning positions are classified under the ordinance and the rules, those are both unclassified, so not subject to civil service. Okay. Um, I know in our description we were told that you couldn't really find anything under the OML salary survey. I did, however, look up some different cities and did come across, oh, where are they? What did I do with those great thingies here? Ah, oh, here they are. And the city of Struthers back in uh, 2020, they had a full-time position, 40 hours per week with a salary of $31,200. And I believe they're a city that, uh, about 10,000, I do believe, on them. And then another one was the city of Jackson, Ohio. And they're saying an annual salary shall be 20,800 to 38,000. And I have that written here. I didn't get enough time to get that all in here. And they're rather smaller. They're 6,240 mm -hmm. population. I thought this was a part-time position. Uh, desires to create a part-time unclassified position, but it says an annual salary of 20,800 to 38,000 to be paid on a bi-weekly basis. So where exactly did we come up with the 72? As I stated in my email on Friday, we took the OML survey from, let me pull that up, I'll read the, well, I have it right here, I'll read the exact language. The Building Code Enforcement Director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Building and Code Enforcement Director. We took that under 30,000, averaged it, came up with 76, did it again with 15,000, came, came mm -hmm. under just $72,000, so we felt the $72,000 was an acceptable amount, and that's also what was budgeted and council approved last year. Yeah, but don't agree. I don't think I would have approved that. I did question it, and he said, well, that would be up, you know, before the money gets spent, it has to come to us. So I might say yes to something that I'm going to complain about le later. Um, I don't have job descriptions <coughs> as yet, but I would imagine that these cities do. Um, I found a number of cities that do have it, and what do they call it? They actually call it a code enforcement officer. And that would have been Struthers and Wellston, Bellefontaine. But it, well, yeah, whatever. Logan County. And I believe it is Weston Dodds. He he was uh, had started out in that position, I believe, in 2014. Niles has one. Wilmington, Dublin. Um, I believe Columbus does as well. The thing of it is, the only one that actually that I think has a charter is the city of Dublin on that. There was another thing I'd come across when my searching. I think it was Westfield or something. I don't remember that. But uh, they had had one, but then they got, they eliminated it. I mean, how did we come up that we added it in here that they had to have uh, police officer training? I believe that's what that is, Ohio Peace <coughs> Training Academy mm -hmm. certification. Maybe I should ask, when did we, when did you guys write this? You don't know? Let me look, okay.
Well, anyway, I'd like you to send me that information that you have from the. Uh, I already, I already sent it to you. You already sent it to us. What yeah. you're in your memo? I sent it on Friday. There was an attachment with. How many did, did everyone else get that email with mm -hmm. all the attachments of or the building code enforcement stuff where you were you where you that, broke when I sent it to you about the thing? Okay, all right. I'm just making sure. Yeah, with all the. Yeah. And it has a breakdown as to how you arrived at the 72,000? Yeah, it shows probably 25 different cities. I'm just, I'm looking at it right here. I'll send it to you again. Okay, I don't remember seeing that in mine, but. Um, I think I also printed out a copy for you. In? Uh, and left it in your box on Friday. It had all the cities. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I don't, I don't remember. I don't have it with me. And I brought what I had in there, so. It's possible, could have fell out in the car and I just didn't see it. It was this this thing. Okay, no, I don't remember seeing that at all. It was attached to his email that he sent on Friday. It was the last one. So on mine, I had to scroll them across to see the other attachments. Yeah, maybe I didn't download all of them. So that's possible, I should have. I will look at so, that there to be then. clear, that was not part of the agenda. It was the weekly updates. But right, I understand, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. was that under the council update? Is that what we're saying? Yeah. 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 Okay. His update. Okay, because I, I didn't see it either, and I think that... I think you scroll down you to the to bottom of the email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or, or I believe it came out on Thursday. Attachments over <clears throat> to the left. Yeah. Yeah, it came out on Thursday. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's the last uh, one. See the added sections? Is that what it is? Oh, also, just to bring it to your intention, section four of the emergency language is missing. To the next committee meeting, that's fine. Here's yeah. like give everyone a chance to yeah. look at the salary information. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wasn't it on the memo? Shouldn't it have been with the memorandum? Per perhaps because we aren't all on the same page, we should move this I didn't either see, to I didn't committee the whole next the week or the next work sessions. I, I didn't see okay. it, so I don't, I I don't didn't know what happened. With no, but I'll, I'll check when I go home. Okay. Well, Mr. Lucas, right. be because it's your committee and you didn't see it, my suggestion is we move it to either the committee of the whole next week or the next work session. Okay. All right. Do you need me to make a motion for that, or are we just going to no. move it? No, we'll just continue okay. on. It. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Sometimes I seem to have the same issue. I'll check it on, on the surface here. And it seems like when there's more than maybe three or four attachments, I try to scan them over, and it seems like I can't, sometimes can't access them. Mm -hmm. They don't go over. So maybe I'll touch base with someone after the meeting and see, because I, I didn't see it either, honestly. And just okay. if there's any other information that's needed, I'm sure Mr. Tursky will appreciate before I'll, Monday. Ms. Tursky, I'll touch base with you, and I'll show you. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's something that's maybe with the email, but it didn't come up on mine either. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, we want to make sure oh, okay. we get the information council yep. needs for Monday, yep. uh, so you can look at it again. If I can just add two real quick, that um, the 16th largest city in the state of Ohio is 50,942 people. I did forget to write down the name of that city, which is great. Um, but their pay range for a uh, administrator, zoning administrator, is $45,480 to $49,230. But then there's another city called Yellow Springs, Ohio, and uh, their administrator, uh, zoning administrator rather, is 55,000 to 70,000, and their population is 3,000 people. Just to kind of put that out there. Who, who are these from that just came down? Charlotte, Me. I think. Okay. Just so I know. So we will we'll address that probably next Monday, then, to the zoning administrator position. So we'll move on to letter D, dangerous dogs, Mr. Kernan. Thank you, Mr. President. This, uh, we did get some language uh, attached here, um, some additional language uh, that we could add into our particular um, ordinance to make it read more, it brings it up to date and, and adds those things that we kind of liked in Barberton's. First one would be to add uh, language uh, that a sign be placed on the premises uh, where the penner structure is located so as to be clearly legible um, from the public street so that you can see that from the street, which ours does not say now. Um, and then there is also some sections that we would add that would more clearly empower the court 
to order a dangerous dog that attacks a human being or another domestic animal that uh, it could be ordered destroyed when in the court's judgment the dangerous dog represents a continuing threat and then also uh, the court could order a person found guilty of violating this section to pay expenses including shelter shelter food veterinary expenses those types of things by the owner of the dog so it just kind of strengthens those enforcement powers for the court mm -hmm. so yep I'd just like to add something um, like I said before uh, being a mailman for 25 years um, dangerous dogs doesn't seem like to, to, to someone that's not dealt with it doesn't seem like it's that serious an issue but when you I mean I've like I've said we had an employee that was mauled by a pit bull in Barberton for like several minutes it was a very traumatic experience missed months worth of work lawsuits doctor bills the whole thing was a nightmare so <clears throat> I just think it's it's obviously way more important that we have a way of dealing with any dog that deems itself dangerous whether it's a chihuahua that won't stop biting people or it's a rottweiler um, and um, I think this is definitely important the sign is very important like we discussed before um, so many more people going on to property to make package deliveries these days Amazon FedEx UPS water meter guy any any scenario um, I like that we're adding the sign as well because I think it's just an, an extra layer if you see the sign then you at least know a heads up okay there's a dog here that could be dangerous so I I, I, I like this ordinance I think it's important I, I was kind of wondering seems like we brought up this discussion due to the fact that the gentleman was in here on April 24th making a com complaint and his frustration that didn't seem that anything could be done about uh, when a dog came after his wife mr. Parker yeah yes um, so that's not actually going to change anything for that type of a situation with what we're putting here correct because wasn't that what it was that nothing could be done about it I think he coming in and addressing council was one of the reasons that we kind of started digging into this just to tighten it up a little bit but we didn't really get too much further advanced than what we had as far as the we can enforce it more really is well, if, yeah, if something actually happens, if it has already been deemed a dangerous dog or if it actually uh, attacks, but I don't think any, <coughs> there's any actual harm outside of being somebody scared that particular right. instance. So that's what I was going to ask next. Why wasn't nothing done if we had something for that? That had to be the case, right? The dog I mean, was charged I, or? Part, part of it, too. I mean, I, I guess it sounds corny, but like dogs, you know, kind of innocent until proven guilty as well I mean I think it, like we said before it's way more important that we ha have a way of dealing with a dog once it is deemed dangerous right than necessarily the, the you know as long as the, the wording and the language is there on how to deal with it if it does bite somebody <coughs> is so the most important part you told me that they didn't want to press charges that's correct oh. so that's why nothing was done okay yeah All right okay thank you And this doesn't contain, just for the public's information, this doesn't include any breed specific mentions at all. So I, I guess the next step would be is if, if um, committee and council's in agreement, um, could we go ahead and, and have an updated ordinance with that language added to it for review at the next committee work session? Right. Thank you. Okay. We don't have an ordinance in front of us. No, right, right. Okay. Yeah. That's I see. I, I guess before we finish, I did have one question. Is mm -hmm. it too late? Mm -mm. Just uh, on here under um, J, I, I, uh, it just came back to my memory. This special permit is required for the keeping of each dangerous dog. I, I guess what I'm, I'm trying to understand is the special permit, it's $100. Is this like after the fact like we kind of already discussed so once once a dog is deemed dangerous it's because it's bitten someone not because it's a deemed a dangerous dog by breed correct that's yeah. my understanding there's no breed designation right we did, that's so what I they've, been, they've been determined to be dangerous under the ordinance and so once they've been determined to be dangerous then you have to have a permit okay. to keep that dog okay okay thank you 
And that's when the signs and everything would kick in. Right. So if you look at, I mean, at the very beginning, the definition of dangerous right. dog mm -hmm. tells you what that is. Yeah. And so once, once it fits into that definition, Which then everything else being. kicks yep. in. Perfect. Okay. Any further discussion on the dangerous dogs? Okay, so we will get the ordinance prepared. Letter E, 2023 Asphalt Resurfacing Program. That is my committee. So the, the general road program has concluded and it came under bid by 200, well, if you add the contingency, almost $400,000 it came under. So we did have an alternate list and administration is requesting that with that money and then adding some additional money, we not only pave that alternate list, but we add Columbia Woods Park and Loyal Oak Park. Columbia Woods would add an additional $107,625.50. Loyal Oak Park would add $129,815. And the alternate list is 13 more roads. Yeah. Uh, if you take the $395,000 that we have left over from the estimate on those 13 streets plus the parks, uh, it's $817,772.50 minus the 395, almost 400,000. We would have to approve $422,274.69. Um, the logic behind this is these are 2022 prices and it makes sense to get our roads at 22 prices instead of wait till 2024. I'm in support of it. Um, administration have anything to add? Did I cover it? Yeah, I mean, unless Pam, Pam do Yeah, I was just gonna add that we will have an appropriation amendment um, for the additional expenditures for those alternates and for the parks. Okay, Does anybody have any comments? Um, yeah, where are, we, where are we gonna take that money from? So they're gonna be three sources, land improvement, capital projects, and the road program. What, what, what was that again? Capital? Land improvement, capital projects, and road program. Anybody else? I'll just say that, uh, you know, the way prices are jumping around all over the place, that. I think for spending four hundred and twenty-two thousand two hundred seventy-four dollars and sixty-nine cents, that uh, in twenty twenty-four it'd probably be eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, and, and then you get you'll get thirteen more roads and two more parks for that amount yeah, of money. So I it's, it's I think it's a great opportunity, great deal for the city of Norton at this time. And the, and the equipment will already be in the city doing Correct. other road projects, so they can just move right over and knock it out. It's not going to be any more. Uh, impeding to the residents than the equipment that's already going to be here. I did have one question on number 17 on the street name. It said Hemp, Hemp Hill. Correct. It says Hemp Hill, then it says half Copley. Is like Copley paying for half of that road? or That's why it was delayed this year because Copley called us right as the contract started and said, can you please hold off on this until 2024 um, because they will split it with us and gotcha. they want to talk about some stuff with their engineer before they... So we said, yeah, we can kick it a year. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, quick question. Is that Hemp Hill um, east of, of uh, is it 21 or west of? Because there's just that little jog on the other side over by, uh, you know, the Lake Park. Is it? I don't know the exact parameters. Okay. I'll find out. Well, yeah. that'd be the Copley side, so it wouldn't be that side. Yeah. It'd have to be the other side. The west side? Yeah. Oh, we, um, actually, on the on the list, it's it actually 21. says um, yeah. how the Hangtown to 21. Yeah. 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 And then we are going to have the inspection prior to make sure that we're addressing any uh, underlying conditions with the roads, uh, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Will, will that fall under the inspection services we've already uh, paid for, or do we have to get more? Correct. I have to, I have to check on that, but I believe it's, it, it's included. I, it's going to cover it both. Okay. So, <coughs> so that, again, would save us more money, too, right? I'll just make the statement, you know, the, the first year I served on council, we, 
scrape together four hundred thousand dollars for our entire road program. Correct. Correct. So I just think it's a pretty good thing that we're in a position to add four hundred thousand. We've, we've come a long way on our roads, and I, I think that's notable. Out of curiosity, um, I didn't obviously do an audit, but out of these thirty-three, are there any others like Hemp Hill that we have to push off for some other reason, or the other thirty-two have been done? And the let me get the list. <coughs> the other 32 have already been done, yes. Okay, and then they rank, they rank the alternate list, so we had them prepare an alternate list of which ones were more severe than the others. Um, but instead of just kind of having, they fall into group boards and stuff like that, so our recommendation is just do them all so that way council, can, you know, we're not picking and choosing. I mean, not to throw, you know, Councilman Towson under the bus, but he called me and said, well, you know, what's the, you know, when is this road, this road, and this road being done? I'm like, oh, Darn it, those are the first three on the alternate list. So, you know, I, yeah, we're trying to be cognizant for everyone. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? Well, then I will make a motion for administration to draw up legislation uh, for next <coughs> Monday's meeting to this extent. And uh, be because we are using Heron and so is Barberton, they're in Barberton right now. So if we can get this passed quickly, we save money again by them being kind of right in our neighborhood. So uh, I will be looking for emergency language and waiving of readings next week. I'll second. <coughs> do we need a, we just need to ask you to do that, right? Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, I don't think we need a vote. Okay. And Mr. Towsley, just thought, as Mr. Keener said before, uh, just a reminder, there will be a separate ordinance for the appropriation amendments, which we'll have also for Monday. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, moving on to letter F, drones. Mr. Kernan. Thank you, Mr. President. I, um, this discussion came up uh, last week or the week before uh, was brought up. I had a chance to talk with Chief D'Alessandro uh, regarding this. He had indicated to me that he and Chief uh, Schultz have been talking about drones for some time and discussing those things. So this isn't something new to the two departments. They have been talking about it, but kind of put it on the back burner after the plot camera discussion, debacle, whatever we want to call it. Um, but he said he's more than willing to, uh, they have actually um, put together a, a committee to take a look at these things. Um, and he would be more than happy to get that information to us. So. Um, I would suggest that we wait until the chiefs have an opportunity to do that and can bring forth the information that they have and then take up the discussion at that time. So I would suggest that we just kind of put this on the back burner <coughs> until that comes from the two uh, chiefs, the police chief and the uh, fire chief. And, and I would agree with that. And further, I would ask council members, and I will be doing this myself, if you have certain parameters you'd like to see in this, please contact the chiefs. Like I want to see certain protocols followed um, before they do such a thing. Mm -hmm. So I agree with Mr. Kernan. I think this makes sense to kind of hold off till they can bring something before us, and then we can take it apart and add and subtract to it if we like. And, ju and just so you know, I mean, they talked about the, the physical drones themselves, but also the um, training and, and different things that would have to be done. Um, within the police department, within the fire department, this isn't just, oh, we got mm -hmm. a drone, let's go fly it around. Um, yeah. Officers are trained, they're, you know, the parameters are set out, so they want to get all that information together because obviously training is going to cost money. Mm -hmm. um, so they want to get that information together so that we have that and can make a, an informed decision. So. Yeah. Mr. Kernan, that's why I wanted to add that as well. That, that was my discussion when I spoke with the chief as well, that, you know, it's not just a, a loose, loosey-goosey kind of situation. They have to be FFA, FAA, I believe it is, certified mm -hmm. to even fly these. Um, you have to basically have, like, a pilot's license to fly these drones. So, you know, you kind of – I don't have a drone, and I don't know much about them. You know, you just kind of have this picture that, well, just somebody grabs a remote and goes and flies it. <laughs> right. You know, and it's, that's really – furthest thing from the truth right and um, I guess I, it's still early for you know a lot of the discussion part of this but I would just be curious is this a situation where maybe we could have one like maybe <coughs> one really nice one that could be shared amongst the police and fire or is it a situation where they both need one or they were talking about and, and again it's very preliminary um, they'll bring that forward but 
my discussion was that there would be a drone that the departments would share. Yeah. And to me, it seems like, I mean, I don't know how much they would actually need it or use it. It's one of those things, if you had it, you know, if it saves one life, it's worth it, right? Yep. Or saves one property or, or, or finds a person that's running from the police, and, yep. you know, then it's worth it. Or well, finds, excuse or, me if I may, but a lot of times in emergency situations, you got police and fire both working at the, for the same cause. Right. So, I mean, it's yeah. something that could be looked at. So, And, and just as importantly is um, finding someone... Um, someone with dementia or alzheimer's mm -hmm. who's wandered away um, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of good uses for these things but i want to give the chiefs the opportunity yep. to put Correct. their uh, information together and bring that to us so. that's cool sounds good and i and I, i'll add to that too I, I wouldn't be opposed to each department having their own drone because police drones do what police drones do fire drones do what fire drones do and if there was a situation maybe there was a lost child if we could have two drones in the air looking covering more ground I think it would be a, a, a always more better to have more, or if one gets crashed. And I know the last time we discussed drones, uh, there was somebody questioning a neighbor flying a drone close to their property and so forth. And when we looked into it at that point in time, drones, they are controlled through FAA, but I believe that's the only only requirements on them at this point. I don't, I haven't heard of Ohio passing any additional legislation controlling zones, drones, but I don't know. I thought I saw something when I was looking into it, but I didn't get it all out, but they'd recently come up with something and they actually have a committee. Um, I'd already passed out, I think, to all of you got it, about the article that just came out this past June at, out of Marietta, Ohio, that's uh, talking about some different things. And then I just wanted to mention that it, while I was going through it, that there are some cities and townships and counties that already have legislation that have their own things set up as far as what they can do or don't. I didn't get through them all, but uh, Anderson Township, Butler County, Salina, Avon Lake, Toledo, Lorain County, um, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Columbus. There may be more, but those are the only ones that I managed to jog down. My computer was kind of locking up on me and refusing to help me out there. But they all have things separate from the state, and that's what I was stating last week. If we're going to move in that direction, I'd really like to have something in as an ordinance as to what it is that they can and cannot do as well and to I, govern them. And I guess I would suggest that if anybody has suggestions that you get them to the chiefs right. so that they can take a look at that while they're putting their proposal together so that we don't have them come in here and then all of a sudden we've got 6,000 different things we're asking them that we didn't ask them ahead of time. I think that would be helpful. Okay, so this will be coming back to us whenever they're prepared, I suppose. So we'll move on to non-agenda items. Are there any non-agenda items to come before council this evening? Mr. President, oddly enough, I actually have one. <laughs> yes, Mr. President. I was wondering, I, I know that the House Bill 187 is being um, talked about in, in Columbus, and that would be uh, the method on which uh, values for property is calculated um, so that when taxes are set, uh, you know, it's calculated a different way. Um, I know that Mr. Romer co-sponsored the bill. I don't know if maybe we can, as a council, as a city, um, uh, send a letter of support or something for this legislation um, indicating that we would like to see the different method of calculating property values because the way it's set up now, um, it doesn't use all of the properties in the area and it uses I think one year as opposed to using all of the properties in an area over a three year period. Um, so I think one of the reasons that House Bill 187 is being discussed is so that we people are looking at increases um, in their property taxes coming up here in, uh, in August when they start uh, revaluing properties so uh, I don't know what council thinks about that but I would be willing to sign a letter um, supporting this uh, House Bill 187. 
I would be on board as well. I mean, if it's really 34%, like you're saying, on average. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my understanding is is they're, is they're thinking that the, the property value would go up 34%. I don't know that that translate in, translates into a 34% increase in your okay. taxes, but right. your taxes will go up. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, whatever, <laughs> nobody wants to pay more taxes than they have to. Yeah, right. And so I think that we need maybe mm -hmm. to show our support for that bill. Kind of like when gas goes up a dollar overnight, right? Yeah, yeah, right. There ought to be a happy me medium here. Right, right, exactly. So I don't know what the rest of council thinks, but. Um, First I'm hearing of that bill, but I'll, I'd be happy to check it out and maybe reach out to Mr. Romer and see, get some more details on that. That sounds like something that would benefit us all. Mr. Markey, is that something you could help me with as far as sure. uh, who to contact and fashion in a letter? Okay, unless somebody objects, now's the time to object, we will we'll do that and bring it forward. What was that bill number again? 187. House bill. <coughs> Thank you. Can't object because I don't know what we're talking about <laughs> completely. If you, um, just go ahead and Google it, it'll come up. And then the text, okay. actually the text of the, of the uh, statute is, is fairly short. It, it strikes pager. out the, the language that okay. they want to take out and replace. So. A lot of times, like 20 pages, yeah. it seems yeah. like. Okay. It's pretty straightforward for once coming out of Columbus. Might even invite Mr. Romer if he wants to speak mm -hmm. about it. That, that'd be fine. Anybody else have nine agenda items? Yeah, do, have we gotten any further on the sidewalk? I can have that ready for discussion at the next committee of the whole, if that's what council would okay. like. And uh, what about the tree legislation? We got any more on that? That Richie, Richie, that you're talking, talking about, 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 about the grading ordinance? Uh, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, the, you're what you're looking at from Rich Hill. I think yeah, that we're having, um, one of the attorneys at Retzel, uh, one of the attorneys at Retzel is looking over some of the recommendations that Richfield themselves said that you should consider if you're putting this. They had good success with theirs, but they, they did make some recommendations. Yeah, they're amending their ordinance. There's another attorney in my office is the law director in Richfield, and they're amending their ordinance. And so they suggested uh, we could put the ordinance, we could introduce the ordinance as is, but they're making some procedural changes just to make it a little bit easier. They recently had some court cases where they were able to defend the statute and they feel pretty, ordinance, they feel pretty strongly it's a good ordinance, but they had some uh, operational things they wanted to clean up. So I was waiting to see what those look like. I'll send an email right now about that. And then just to clarify, since I saw, saw a whole bunch of people having to make a detour through this school parking lot and that side street up there, well, is that gonna get fixed today? Yeah, we're, we're well, we're hoping. It depends on whether they work through the night or they come back tomorrow. So, I mean. Mm. Okay. And was that uh, another truck accident? That's correct. Hmm? Excuse me? That is correct, yes. It wasn't really an accident. They tore the wires down. They drove underneath it and got tangled up in the wires. Now, isn't there a minimum that those wires have to be? I believe it's 16 feet. Mm -hmm. We're working with the engineer on that to get in contact with the utility company about it. Um, waiting to hear back on what they say. Mm -hmm. I know it's it's weird because I drive drive down Medina Line Road all the time, and on the one side of Medina Line Road, I swear I could I me <laughs> me I could reach up and grab the the lines. <laughs> That's right. So, is that with your words? That's pretty yeah, good. Um, <laughs> no, that's standing flat footed, and um, that's saying a lot. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah. And then, have we heard from um, Soil and Water and the engineer for the JLP development? Yes. The engineer has reached out to us. We were getting um, Summit Soil and Water in contact with them about the SWIP, so the Stormwater Prevent stormwater prevention plan mm -hmm. so those just connecting those two to get that um, complete so we don't have it back yet <laughs> not yet okay thank you anybody else have any non-agenda items this evening uh, one quick thing on the um, 
since it was mentioned on the one but not the other, the Cleveland Maslin uh, Road Resurfacing Engineering Services, we would like that to be for council to consider waiving the readings on that. Okay. Um, because in their, t I don't know if you looked at the proposal, in their tentative schedule, they have um, giving a pre-construction meeting beginning of August, and I know obviously with council's break, we don't wanna, you know, if we let this go three readings, it'll be until September when it's passed. Yeah, I apologize, you no. had mentioned that before the meeting to me and I forgot. Uh, the emergency language is in the legislation, so just for council's information, we will be looking for waiver with readings on Monday. Thank you. And I just wanted to add it to the, the appropriate appropriation amendment for the alternates in the parks will also include the engineering for Cleveland Maslin. Originally, Cleveland Maslin was just budgeted for the construction costs, not the um, observation. So that will be part of the appropriation amendment that you will see next week. Okay, and that will be emergency with waiver yes, readings please. as well. And I just had two things. One, Mr. Tursky, did we find out anything about that down guardrail there, down by Nick's? Yeah, trucks keep hitting it. Um, yeah, so it's flat uh, as a pancake. The, engineer, the engineer's looking into it to okay. see um, what options there are for that. Okay. Yeah. And then the last one I, I sent you a message about it was, uh, can we check in the Eastern Road in 261 for cars pulling out? It's really hard to see, and it's traffic's kind of getting backed up, so I don't know if we can trim those trees to make it safer for people to pull out. Okay. On the west side of the street? It's on, it's on actually on, it's both, on both sides. sides. Yeah. Okay. Because I say, I, don't know, I know on the west side, some of those trees are low hanging at yeah. right there at the corner. So well, that one, the one tree's got a big split trunk and the mm -hmm. one side of the trunk's out past the telephone pole. Mm -hmm. So when you're, you're nosing out, yeah. and those trucks that come down there aren't going slow, so right. Right. appreciate it. Anybody else have non agenda items this evening? Okay, uh, topics for next work session. I believe, as Mr. Tursky said, the sidewalks will be on the next work session. That's all I have at the moment. I'm sure there will be more. Anybody else? I would like to make a motion to adjourn the Well, meeting. prior to doing that, I just would like, sure. I'm sorry to interrupt, sure. but well, I just I want, that doesn't really fit in here. I just wanted to wait till our business was done. but. Uh, tomorrow night is the first of three movie nights here in the park. We have um, June 20th, July 18th, and August 15th. Uh, those are the three movie nights. And um, so whoever's hearing this or all of you, welcome to come out and join us. Uh, it movie will begin at dark uh, here uh, on the football field here in Columbia Woods Park. Perfect. I actually oh. do have one more thing. I yep, apologize. Sure. Um, just so everyone knows that Park Board did cancel their meeting for Wednesday due to a lack of agenda items. Um, so, just to note. Okay. Is the uh, memorial still moving forward? I haven't heard it from about that in a while. That was one of the updates we had for them. And I, I guess I'll give council the, I'm still gonna let them know as well. Um, our uh, last year or during COVID, OHM was brought in to do a uh, Parks Master Plan. Mm -hmm. Um, when I, when they came in to visit, uh, they always do visit to new administrators to see, hey, how are things going? Um, they mentioned about the plan, and I said, you know, we're, we're talking currently about a uh, veterans memorial, and they said, that's actually, you know, the guy that wrote the plan did a veterans memorial, was it Geauga County? I think it was. Was it Geauga County? I and so. I And I brought um, Councilman Lukens in to talk with, uh, I think his name was Jeremy. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy yep. yeah. Jeremy and Josh, um, from OHM about it, and they submitted a proposal to us to kind of give an evaluation plan of where that should go. I know that was a topic mm -hmm. of conversation of location, but then they also said, don't be short-sighted in your memorial. Um, you can potentially make it more, it, the, w the way it was described to me is, there's an opportunity, because they have a connection in with Summit Parks, is it Summit? PPG? Was it? Yeah, well, um, it's, it's acquiring property from PPG. They believe that there might be an inroad to that again. Um, so that's part of the proposal they submitted was to do an evaluation uh, and to start those conversations. It's it's under five thousand dollars. It wouldn't have to go to part or it wouldn't have to go to BOC. I truly believe it would be good to make sure that we vet this out. Wanted to let park board know that we we're going to let council know just so everyone's on the same page because if we're going to spend that much money. 
we got to make sure it fits within right. everything. So right. great. All right, and then with the, I'm going to tag team off of that with parks meeting canceled next week. Uh, Neva requested us to cancel due to the fact of uh, items, but there were a couple things that um, we were going to talk to them about. One of them being the uh, the cemetery. I know the fence has been put up at the cemetery on the diagonal. There's still dirt sitting there, and I've been working with Larry trying to hold him up a little bit because I wanted to have conversation with the parks board. Um, the cemetery sign was taken down at the time that uh, the fence and so forth was taken down, but we have it, but it's wood and it's uh, part of it's rotted. They were hoping to kind of fix it up a little bit, but it's, I think it's, it probably needs replaced. So um, we're looking at some options right now using composite wood, but not wanting, you know, I mean, trying to keep uh, the uh, cost uh, reputable, but on the other hand, making a nice sign. So there was some discussion we were going to have there. We're still going to continue to have some discussion with Parks Board. Um, I know Larry's it has had talked about moving that pile of dirt and stuff, trying to get some of that taken care of as well. So it is all in the works. We're not, we didn't forget about it. We're just, uh, trying to make sure that our due diligence is taken care of before we uh, just go out and, and do something. So just moving that forward. So, all right, that's Great. all I have. Thank you. Great. Could I take a quick step back? I was going to ask which uh, movies we were had selected for movie nights. Ugh. Oh, uh, the one tomorrow night is... is Yes, it's... In, yes, Shrek? I was trying to... Oh, no, it's Incredibles? Yeah, but it's Enchanto. <laughs> is okay. tomorrow I'm night um and i know the third one so will be uh mermaid? top gun Ooh. but uh i'm the, not sure what the middle one the new was. one of, the new one or the, the original well, uh, i think uh, <laughs> i know it's top gun <laughs> i think so. i said maverick but it's enchanto oh, tomorrow night i do know that TV. and it's it's at dark so TV. i just watched it last night it's great before i call for adjournment, does anybody else have anything else? Then I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll Second. Say. All in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.